A lesson today is entitled Call to Evangelize, and it's found in the Gospel according to John, chapter 4, verses 25 through 42. This is Sunday School Lesson for February the 7th, 2021. My name is Tony Miller, and our key verse is found in the 39th verse of our text. And it reads as follows, many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did again our lesson is entitled call to evangelize Amen. so the aim of this lesson is to identify the barriers jesus crossed in speaking with the samaritan woman and since the wonder the samaritan woman felt in her meeting with jesus and share her share with others the transforming power of god at work in their lives. This is my YouTube channel. Again, well over 220 lessons are in my archive. I ask that you please hit the subscribe button and the bell. You'll get these lessons automatically. Like my lessons, share my lessons, leave me comments. They all encourage me to continue to share the Word of God with you. And I have an Instagram page, Sunday Lessons for You, where I do share excerpts from these lessons. Let's move on. This is a page that I share each week that describes me as a sharer of the Word of God. I, I, I think that you should know what each person who's, speech, who's teaching you, their point of view. This gives you an idea of my, uh, my point of view. We navigate the International Sunday School lesson text each week, verse by verse, guided by the power of Holy Spirit of all. Almighty God. Amen. So this thing I started this week, this year, that uh, that I want your questions, and I thank you for those who have submitted me questions. There, are, uh, what are the questions that plague you about the Bible? What are the questions that cause you pause from being a Christian? What are your biggest challenges to God's Word? Those little questions, too silly, too simple, or too small. You can add your questions in my email, that's in the description box or in the notification box, and I'll respond. If I don't have the answers, I'll find them for you. Amen. Let's move on. So background I share each week that encompasses some definition terms, theories, people, history, maps, and our places. You know, the, and I think that is relevant. So, uh, but if you are don't need background, you always can fast forward through the background to the text. Let's move on. Amen. Word evangelize. Evangelize is our evangel is to share uh, religious beliefs, especially Christian beliefs. Where you know, we, we go to church each Sunday and the preacher and ministers evangelize from the pulpit from the churches on Sunday and, and then they, and they, they talk about Jesus and their goal is to evangelize again to, to make you become Christians along your journey in your life. Let's move on. Another term, Messiah, Messiah is Jesus. He's that Messiah. He's a name that's above all names. He's God with us. He's a ransom from heaven. He is the rescue for sinners. He is the Lord of all. His very word of God that was made flesh. That's his Messiah. God with us. Amen. So prophecies that are that were noted and from the Old Testament about this uh, Messiah. Uh, you know, the Old Testament prophets and those who seek the wise men who are looking for Jesus, those who search the scriptures, those who go to synagogue each week, they, they learn about this Messiah so they'll know when he's on the scene. The prophets were told that the Messiah would be born of a virgin, be born uh, in, uh, of a woman, be born, be the son of God. Redeem, be descendant of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob. He's from the tribe of Judah. Uh, from, from the family of Jesse, from the house of David. And the tribe of Judah, you'll see that be significant as we move on. Be born in Bethlehem, presented with gifts for those wise men. Uh, be threatened by, by King Herod, who wanted to kill all the boy babies because he was looking for that, that, that Messiah uh, because he wanted to worship them. He couldn't, he, he decided to kill all the boy babies, hoping he would catch him in this big nap. That he'll be, he'll be God and man. He'll be verily God and verily man. He will be deity. He'll be God who come in the flesh. 
Again, that Emmanuel, God with us, Isaiah 7 and 14. He'll be a prophet, he'll be a priest, he'll be a judge, he'll be a king, he'll sit on David's throne. He'll be preceded by a messenger, that'll be John the Baptist who will precede him. He will teach first in Galilee and will perform many miracles. That's how the, pro uh, the prophecy portrayed this one Messiah. When you see this guy, that's the one God sent on our behalf. Let's move on. The Samaritans term is important as long as an uh, important part of this message today. The Samaritans were a group of people who lived in Samaria, and I'll share with you on the map following this uh, this in the area north of Jerusalem. Uh, they were half Jews and half Gentiles, and I'll explain to you why they when when uh, when Assyrians were captured in the kingdom. So what happens when uh, after uh, after um, um, the king had died, and then there, what happened is. Uh, uh, Solomon had died, then, then the, the Jeroboam and Rehoboam fought for power, and the, and the northern kingdom kept sinning and went a, contrary to God, and they worshipped the golden calf, and God decided to scatter his people. And he scattered them into captivity by the Assyrian army to take away two thirds of the of the of the tribes, the lost tribes of of, of, of Jesus and of, of of the of the Jews. They were they were lost, and and uh, and and those people who were left behind, they intermarried with those uh, Samaria of uh, the Assyrian people who who had uh, who had, uh, who had cast them out, and, and they intermarried with those people. So they were neither fully Jew nor fully, nor, nor fully Gentiles. Samaritans had their own copy of the first five books of the Bible because they were Followers of Jesus, they had the Pentateuch. They're followers of God, I'm sorry. Followers of God, so they, 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 they were Jews. They went to synagogue. And they had the five books of the, of the uh, Bible that they worshipped. And at the time of Jesus, the Jews and the Samaritans did not deal with another. They were not interacting with others. However, Jesus ministered to the people of Samaria, Samaria, preaching this good news. That's what we'll find in our lesson today. No clunky here, but I'll, I'll get through this. Let's move on. In this region of Judah, so the, the northern two-thirds of the tribes were lost in that battle for power after Solomon died and Jeroboam and Rehoboam. They both took all over these regions as, as the new king and those from the northern tribe is where Samaria is located and Jerusalem is a, is a capital in Judah. Some perspective for you. Let's move on. So how did we get here in the fourth chapter of John? Background coming is from the first four books of the Gospel according to John that lead us to our lesson. Amen. The Gospel according to John. And I share with you the last, I don't know, three or four weeks that, uh, that the, the difference between the uh, the Gospel of John and the, and the other synoptic, synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Luke, they, that they portray Jesus as a king and a servant and the son of man. And John is different because he portrays Jesus as the son of God. That is important in who is deity. You know, in John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the very word was God. That word that was in the bosom of the Father before the foundation of the earth, the word that was there present when God spoke and everything that was not became. John wants you to know that. So John states his theme more clearly than the other gospel writers he wrote so that the readers might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And they may have life in his name as it accomplishes gold. He presents a riveting and distinctive picture of Jesus as this Christ throughout the gospel according to John and he is also that God man that that man that God that word that became flesh the tabernacle with man for 33 and a half years let's move on so background uh, let's give you background chapter 1 and 2 and I'll give you 3 and 4 in the next cell that uh, that John uh, chapter 1 uh, like I just shared with you, that word became flesh. That's what John uh, is, is speaks to us about. And it goes on to John the Baptist, who's that forerunner, telling everybody about the Messiah who's going to come. He's baptizing people for repentance. And then he also tells everybody, no, I'm not that one. I'm not the one. He's coming after me. He, he said, I'm just a voice crying out in the wilderness. And, 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 and John will testify about Jesus. And some people want to know, is, is he this Jesus, whoever he is? No, I'm not that one. But, but the one is coming. 
he'll be he'll be the Messiah. And, and, and he will say that, that, that there is a Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the earth as, as, as he sees him coming and he will baptize him. And John, the disciples will ultimately follow Jesus' disciples. And they'll wonder which one it should be following. And he'll say, no, you follow Jesus. I'm just the one to lead you to him. And then Jesus would ultimately start calling his disciples with Philip and Nathaniel. In chapter 2, we go to the story and you know the narrative about Jesus who, who ch he changed the water and the wine of the first miracle that he does at the, the wedding at Cana. When he's there with his mother and, and, and the mother tells him that they, they're running, they ran out of wine and, and he will tell the, the, the men to bring these, these clay uh, pots and he will, uh, they'll fill them with water and he will convert it to wine. And Jesus will clear the temples for the first time like he will do again later on. Didn't want these people to be turn his, his father's house into a den of thieves. Let's go to chapter 3 and 4. And chapter 3 and 4, the story about Nicodemus, where Jesus will have this interaction with this Nick, Nick at night. They will come at night and he will come and speak to Jesus and Jesus tell him that he has to be born again. And there's this dialogue about him going back in his mother's womb and on and on and on. And John will testify again about this Jesus. And then in chapter 3, uh, chapter 4, Jesus will talk with a Samaritan woman. That's what we are in our text today. Let's move on to we get to our lesson. Amen. So that's our background, about 10 and a half minutes. Let's move on. We have a lot of text to come, cover, so let's move on to try to get through this text. Amen. So in John chapter 4, the introduction. So in John chapter 4, Jesus and his disciples just left Judea returning back to Galilee and in a route they would they would go directly through Samaria I just shared it with you on the map and 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 although the Jews and Samaritans were both descendants of of the ancient Israel they're both from the the 12 tribes their religious practices and beliefs were slightly different because again I share with you that they've been uh, they've been cast out for a while and they, they still had their own uh, five books and this long-standing hostility between them, there was this. And while his disciples went into the city to buy food, Jesus rested by the well in the heat of the day. And while Jesus rested, a Samaritan woman came to the well to draw water. And due to the special customs, social customs, that the woman did not expect Jesus to speak to her because she's a Samaritan and he's a Jew. And he asked her, to draw physical water for him and he promised that he would provide her with living or spiritual water and there at the well they started a theological conversation the conversation progressed and and she realized that this Jesus was was no ordinary Jewish man that just before the disciples returned Jesus revealed to this Samaritan woman that he indeed was that long waiting long awaited, uh, awaited Messiah, that he was the one that they were all expecting. Let's move on. And uh, this is our lesson text. It's called to evangelize John chapter 4 verses 25 through 40, uh, 42. This week I'm going to use the New Living as the backdrop. And we'll begin our text with verse 25, verses 25 and 26. And, and here in verse 25 that this woman she says that 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 she's speaking to Jesus and still in this dialogue that she has with him and we don't know how long this dialogue went but it was quite a considerable amount of time as these guys went uh, for some period of uh, some period of time in order to go get food and, and and this woman is speaking to Jesus and the woman said that I know the Messiah is coming the one who is called this Christ Again, they know the prophecy which I shared with you before. They that they, they no doubt know what the Old Testament is, uh, is, has has said. And but when this this Messiah comes, he will explain everything to us. We will understand why we have these problems and why we're this way and why things will go this way. And then and we'll we'll understand it better better when he comes, right? And verse twenty six, and then Jesus told this Samaritan woman that I am. The Messiah I am he that I am the Good Shepherd I am that living bread I am God with us I am Emmanuel 
I am the bright and morning star. I'm the rose of Sharon. I'm the Lord of glory. I'm almighty God. I'm the first and the last. I am that way, the truth, and the life that Jesus once heard and know that he is this unspeakable gift that God has sent to man. He says, I am the Messiah that you speak of. Next slide. Called to evangelize is our subject. Let's move to verse 27 in our text. And again, Jesus is speaking to this woman at the well. And again, like I said, we don't know how long, but I would assume this conversation went on for some time. And you'll see as I share other parts of this, this, uh, this conversation that Jesus would have with this woman along our journey today. In verse 27, that, he's, uh, that again, as Jesus is speaking with this, this woman, and just then, just then, uh, that his disciples came back from the store the market and where they had, had they were shocked to see that that Jesus was was talking to a woman not just any woman but a Samaritan woman the ones that they're not supposed to they don't really talk to but but not not one of these guys who had the nerve to ask Jesus why is he talking to that Samaritan woman not one of those 12 no 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 they didn't ask what do you want to do with her and why are you talking to her you know, people sometimes, it's just like they asked before when the when the prostitute was touching Jesus, they said, do you know who you're touching? No, well, Jesus knew who she was, just like he knew who this woman was as well. He would go on to tell her many things about her life through this conversation. Let's move on. That there is, in this period of time, and even today, there's Jews. And there's Gentiles. That's what the, we all know, that the Jews don't interact with the Gentiles, but they also don't in in interact with the half-breeds, those that are half-Jew and half-Gentile, those Samaritans. They don't interact with them as well. Let's move on. Call to evangelize. Uh, in, in verse 28 of our text, and that woman that Jesus was speaking to, just as those disciples have now come back to this well and they see him speaking to her, that, that, that she finished speaking with Jesus and, 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 and she left her water jar beside the well and she ran. And I, and I think that's important that, we, that, that, that she ran. She did not walk. She, she ran back to the village to tell everyone. She didn't want to tell just a couple of people. She wanted to tell everybody. What she knew about this Jesus, she had to tell them all. Let's move on. Next text. Now, share with you a little bit more of that dialogue that she had with this with Jesus uh, through that period of time. In verse seven, that a woman from Samaria came to draw this water, and and she said to her, "Give me a drink." For the disciples had gone off to the city to buy food in verse 9 and the Samaritan woman asked him Jesus how is it that you being a Jew even speaking to me a woman for a drink for Jews have nothing to do with us Samaritans in verse 10 and Jesus answered her if you knew about God's gift of eternal life and who it is who says give me a drink that would be me that you have asked me him instead of me at and sin and he me would have given you this living water eternal life verse 11 and she said to Jesus sir you have nothing to do to, to draw or no bucket and no rope no rope and this well is deep where do you get that living water that you're speaking of and she asked a question she says, are you greater than our father Jacob? Again, again, she is a, Jacob's name was turned to Israel, and Israel has the 12 sons, that she is acknowledged, that she is from the tribe of, J, uh, of Israel, that she too is a Jew, and she says that our, uh, this is our father who, he, he dug this well back, way back in the day, who gave us this well, and, and even used to drink from it himself, and, the, and his sons, and his, and his cattle also, you know, we're talking about, you know, 
a, a few thousand years ago. And, and, and Jesus answered her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. This water from this well that you're speaking of, but whoever drinks the water that I give him will never thirst again. He's speaking of this living water. He's speaking this dialogue with this woman, this marriage woman, but the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water, satisfying his thirst for God, welling up continually, flowing, bubbling within him to eternal life. And then this woman, again, perplexed, she said to him, Jesus, sir, give me that, this water, so that I will not have to get thirsty, nor have to continually come down, way down to this well to keep drawing this water. Again, the dialogue that Jesus would have with this Samaritan woman. I'll share a little bit more as we move on in this text. Amen. So call to evangelize is our subject. We move to verse 29 through 30. And 29 says, And come and see the man who told me everything I ever did. And that's important because in the copy of the narrative that we have, the language that I just shared with you from verse those verses that are above where we started here, that, that he probably had a very long conversation with her and, and he told her, even in this in this conversation, that he says that, that she had five wives and five husbands. And, and the one that she's living with at the, t at the current time was not even her husband, that she was shacking with him. And, 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 and she probably, he probably no doubt told her other things about herself and other things about her family and other things because he, whatever he did, he told he was convincing to her who he was and the man who told me everything I did ever did, he could possibly be the Messiah. In fact, he says that he was twice to me that he was that Messiah. Verse 30, and so the people came from the village, streaming from the village, I underlined that, to see him, this Jesus, this Messiah. And I share with you this image of the, 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 the uh, preacher and I share with you from my, my childhood thought. That's why I used this image a few times before. And was, I remember when the when the preacher would when the evangelist would come to town and, and he would come and have the tent meetings and and, and, and he would come and, and people from all over around would come to hear him preach the gospel message. That's the feeling that I feel here that Jesus is now in town and the whole village is coming while this man is is preaching is preaching the word of God. He's doing the will of the Father including the Samaritan people in this grand scheme of what his, his task has come to be, one who will take away the sins of all men, not just the Jews. Let's move on. Our narrative. Amen. So call to evangelize. And this text reads from 31 through 34. And, and, and meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus that, that again this conversation that they've just had with him the woman has already left and she's gone back to the city and she's telling the people in the city and and he's and, he, and the people would come to come to bring food back for Jesus and and, and and she's gone on and and now these disciples were urging Jesus rabbi eat something verse 30 32 but Jesus says uh, I have a kind of food you know nothing about Jesus speaking to these disciples and verse 33 it is someone Bring him food while we're gone. Does somebody bring him a burger or something? I don't. I, I don't. They're asking. Did someone bring him food while we're gone? The disciples asked each other in verse 34, and then Jesus explained, "My nourishment comes from doing the will of God, who sent me, doing the will of the Father, from finishing His work, the work that I was called to do." That's what Jesus says. That He doesn't need the food. He's encouraged. He's nourished by doing the will of the Father. Let's move on. Amen. Jesus found great satisfaction doing the will of Almighty God. That even when he was weary, and in fact, the conscious, uh, conscious doing of God's will refreshes the weary Jesus. The bodily thirst and hunger are probably from the time of day which the Lord had felt before. And he had been as forgotten in carrying out his divine work. That he's not, he's not hungry. He's left his mind because he's doing what God has called him to do. Saving the souls of the Samaritan woman and the people of this village. Let's move on. 
called to evangelize in verses 35 through 38. And again, this dialogue, and he says, Jesus speaking to these disciples, and he says, Do you not say that there are still four months? And then comes the harvest. Again, he's having a dialogue with them, and he's seeing the fields out before him. And Jesus says, Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And this is a metaphor, not necessarily the, the fields there. And, and he who reaps receives wages and, and, and gathers fruit for eternal life. That both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in the saying is true. In this saying, the saying, the saying this is true, that one will sow and the other one will reap. And as often one will be the one who will plant the seeds and another one will do the harvest. That's just how it happened. Those who plant seeds, that's their expertise. They'll go from field to field planting seeds and others who will, who will harvest. Maybe they're using the equipment that will allow them to harvest. That's, that saying is true. One who sows and another reaps. And I sent you to reap. For that which you have not labored, that you did not plant any seeds, and others who have labored, others have labored, and, 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 and you have entered into their labors, that you will take advantage of what others have done. That there's a lot of work that is done leading up, like these uh, these these Samaritan people, that they they know what the scripture says, the prophecies have all gone forward, that he says you will you will you will uh, reap from those fields. Let's move on. That's what Jesus says to his disciples here in verses 35 through 38. Let's move on. So make it a little plain, that joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. That's what he's trying to say, that, that, that you know the saying that one plants and another harvests It is true. It is a true statement. That's just how it works. But I sent you, your disciples, to harvest where you did not plant that other people have planted the seeds along this journey. Others have, have, like this woman will say that she knows, she knows about the, the Messiah. And others who have already done this work. And now you will gather the harvest. That's how evangelism works. Evangelism works so where, where that, that, that some of us will, will plant seeds and some of us will, will, will water and some of us will will uh will nurture and, and prune and, and 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 then some of us will be the one that will be harvesting what was done by some of the other people that's gone on before that's how evangelism works and that's what jesus is saying metaphorically to us in this text let's move on call to evangelize and this woman will speak it's verse 39 Call to evangelism. And many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because this woman had said all these things to these people. She had told them about this conversation that she had with this Jesus who, who said that he was the Messiah, but about this Jesus who said that he that he, that he knew all these things about me, that he was a prophet. He said that he was the one who would come. That, he, that, that her testimony, her witness, that what she said to the people, that, that what she said to them, that that those things are what made him made them decide. That he was that Rose of Sharon, that he was Messiah, he was God with us. He was that way and truth in the life that she figured it out when she spoke to him for however long the conversation because of her testimony. He told uh, the many Samaritans from the village believed uh, the woman because of that testimony. And he told me everything I ever did. That's the conversation that she says she had with this Jesus. Let's move on and close. The Samaritan woman, uh, she had this conversation with, uh, with Jesus and our fathers. Again, it's part of the conversation that she had. I said, I'll give you bits and pieces of it along this journey. She had a, the conversation that your, your fathers worship on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where you ought to worship. She's speaking to Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither uh, neither on this mountain 
for in Jerusalem. Again, the, the mountain she's speaking about is the northern uh, part of the, the city where uh, the Samaria, Samaria was. But we uh, know that what we, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. The Jews are the chosen people, right? But Jesus says, but, and they know that they already have the salvation, they believe, at least as well, because they're chosen. But the hour is coming. And it's now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Jesus says, yeah, you, yeah, you, you Jews are worshiping uh, and, 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 and you're Samaritans are worshiping because that's what you think, because you're already chosen and you believe God has something for you. But he said that these people, the hour is coming when real believers will worship in spirit and in truth for the Father seeking such worship for him, self, and his Holy Spirit, God of spirit, and those who must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. To Jesus' conversation with this woman. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, but who is called the Christ? And when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Again, he's convinced this woman. That's why she went with such zeal to this, to this village to get everybody to come see this man. This dialogue she's had with this one Jesus. Amen. Let's move on. Call to evangelize. We have only three more texts. First is a text. These are, like, these are two, and then we have one more. And, uh, and verse 40. And when they came out to see him, the people from the village to see this Jesus, they, they begged Jesus to stay in their village. The, this woman has said such phenomenal things about him, and, and Jesus, he stayed for two more days. And he agreed to stay two more days, he along with his disciples, and, and long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Again, we are called to evangelize. This message is about the evangelizing of these people in Samaria. Let's move on. Call to evangelize. This is the last verse of text we have here. And when they said to the woman, now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but, but because we have heard him for ourselves it's like when we finally hear we've heard the mother we've heard we've seen other people but we know for ourselves we're able to walk down this aisle and make our profession of faith that we've encountered this Jesus and now we've heard him for ourselves and now we know that he is indeed that this Jesus the one you told us about is indeed the Savior of not just the Jewish people but the Savior of the world. That is our lesson text. Let's move on to close. Amen. So evangelism is a process that includes the presence of one person or another person, right? That that person will interact with a church or with a with a preacher or with some a teacher or, or someone who's sharing the word of God with them, someone who's a little bit more knowledgeable, and then there will be this proclamation of this gospel, their witness of what they what they know and what they heard and what they've learned and, and what they've experienced along their journey in their life, and then ultimately there will be this 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 witness. And then what happened is they'll bring you to church and there'll be a preacher who will preach and there'll be some kind of persuasion. They'll be planting seeds along the journey of this person's life, along the journey of everybody we interaction, interact in. And all those seeds were planted that they pointed that person to the church. And they made a profession of faith. And they came to the church gr gr grimy. God will the Holy Spirit will do the perfection. We came in the church just as we were. And then we have others who will encourage us, who will, will, will pray for us, or will lead us to, to the life groups, the Bible studies, to, to the study groups, and, and all, and, 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 and join other ministries within the church so that we will find our way and our part in community in this Christian life. That's how evangelism works, and everybody has their part in this effort. Next slide. And we are called to evangelize. That's that whole Great Commission. And where are you in this process? I want to know, where are you? Are you a witness? 
Are you a persuader? Are you a preacher who boldly proclaims the word, who speaks, to, who speaks, and and people will 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 hear, and they will come forth, and will and we baptize? Are you a prophet? Are you you are you one who will stand for God and proclaim this message? Are you planting seeds? Are you is your life? Are you planting seeds? You're along. You're telling everybody that you meet about God, and are that's your is that who you are? Are you participating? Are you sharing with the people and telling them where they should go and how they should be, how their life could be better? And you're being a mentor to those. Are you participating in this process of, of people who've come to profession of faith? How do you fit? We're all called to evangelize. That's the whole great commission that Jesus left for us. That great commission. Where are you in this process? Are you a witness? Are you a persuader? Are you one who's planting seeds? Are you one who's sharing with other people and encourage them to stay in the, this, this journey? Or are you even in this process? That's the message I share with you. We're all called to evangelize. That's the Great Commission. Hope you're called to evangelize as well. Let's move on to close. that is our Sunday School lesson today call to evangelize it's found in the gospel according to John chapter 25 I mean verse 25 through 42 my prayer for you that something you've learned today strengthens your faith that the Lord provides all of your needs you learn something worthy of sharing you enjoy learning about being called to evangelize and uh, and that you're encouraged to learn with us hope if you would please hit the subscribe button and the bell, even with this notification, though you get these lessons automatically. I leave you out of benediction from us. Heavenly Father, send us our confidence in your word to tell us all of your saving acts. Bring glory to your name. In the name of your son, Jesus, that we do pray and ask these things. Always, amen. Thanks so much for your time.